the percentages you see here represent the percentage of people um, from whom these officials have demanded bribes. This is about bribery. And th this story is taking us into the Cecilia Dapa matter, isn't it? This story is about bribery. So it's uh, the percentage of people, the percentage of uh, Ghanaians that these uh, people in this column have demanded bribes from. So Ghana police officers have demanded bribes from 53.2% of the citizenry. Demanded. Mm. I, I, I don't know how to put this conversation. Because you see, many years ago, I had a show here, this Good Evening Ghana that I've been doing for a lifetime. <laughs> I had a show here. And my guest was Dr. Ramona Tuguba on that occasion. Uh, and he had done some work on police. You know, Dr. Tuguba, before he became Secretary of the President, dedicated his legal practice to researching into police and security and all of that. So he had done some research into how the police do their work. And he told me that on his way to the studio, at that time, we were running an, uh, out of, um, what, what do you call it, OB, out, outdoor broadcast studio in a place in airport residential area. We were marketing a hotel that had just started. So we are doing the program from there. And we tell viewers that we are live in this hotel, etc. So we'll drive our equipment and our OB van then. Uh, we'll invite our guests to come over. So he did. And he said to me that he had just given a policeman 20 CDs. And I said, Prof, but that's a bribe. He said, no, it's not a bribe. How is it a bribe? A policeman stopped him checked his car, and said he should go, and he said, take. So I'm not so sure whether in the analysis that the UN did, this 53% they are talking about is demand from police officers or is people offering the police officers, sometimes because they think they've done wrong, sometimes because they have not done no wrong. In the case of Raymond Atugu, but he had done no wrong. He just felt that the policeman standing there at 8.30 in the evening, it's okay to give him 20 cities. That's what he thought. As his contribution to development, that's what he thought. Now, if you've sat in Trotro before, as I have, you will see that when the police stop, they put their money in the, uh, the driver's license. <laughs> I don't know whether you've noticed that. <laughs> when the police stop, they put their money in the driver's license and give the driver's license to the policeman. So the policeman opens the driver's license and he sees the door, you know. He looks at the driver's license and says, okay. Now, I don't know whether they do that because the driver's license is problematic or they do that because they are just giving money to the police. So we need to look at that. And I, I will want the research to come with further and better particulars to show us that when they say police demanded, was it really demand or that as a culture people are paying them? Whatever it is, the police are leading 53.2%. Ghana Immigration Service officials, 37.4%. There again, they talk about demand. I don't know whether it's demand or that they are giving to the immigration officials, sometimes because they've done some wrong, sometimes because they've done no wrong, isn't it? Our culture is like that. We give to people uh, who we think deserve it or who we think have done something or I mean I go to buy petrol at a petrol station and I buy the petrol and I pay the money and I'm leaving I, the attendant say hey good evening Ghana Mr. Paul yeah, well, how the weather is cold oh Mr. Paul and then I, I, they are not is it, I don't I won't call that demand because they are not they are not cajoling me to give them money they are just sort of you can't even say they are begging but they are creating an atmosphere to suggest to you that if it won't worry you you can drop something very similar to what we pastors do you know we go to church and ask people to pay money. So the guy says, good evening. And I'm a child who is here. Oh, Laboni. Laboni here. Oh, can I find you? Then you may then echo. You know, that's kind of this. And then it means 50 CDs or 20 CDs or 10 CDs. Or 5 CDs, whichever your means is. I'm not so sure whether that, as a culture, is captured in this report uh, so that they don't just say that we are corrupt and, and all. I mean, you can't do that in England. But they do other things. They do different things there as part of their culture. So we have to understand that the corruption index that is depicted here must do better particulars about the transfer of the money and the spirit behind it. It's very, very important. What is the spirit behind me giving the petrol attendant to this city? Is it? Has he cajoled me to do that? No, he's just created an atmosphere and he's asking me that if you don't mind, can you please give me money? Yeah, all right. <laughs> so there's GRA custom officers. That's kind of dangerous, you see, because by the time a GRA custom officer approaches you, it means you are in trouble. It's not like the police officer who approaches you on a routine basis. No. It's not the police. The police officer approaches you on a routine basis. It's not him. This GRA guy there, when he comes to you, it means your taxes have a problem. If, therefore, we are seeing that 33%, 33.6% are paying GRA officials, we should be very, very worried about that. That's where the worry ought to be. We, the police one is okay. But this one, we should be worried. Lance Commission, we should be worried. Because you don't engage a lands commission official unless you are in a transaction about state lands, which are all quite expensive. There's no state land that is cheap. Every state land is expensive. So if in that context, 
32% are paying money as bribes to lands commission. That's very worrying. DVLA, that one too. I mean, I go to DVLA to do my uh, car, uh, what do they call it? Roadworthy. I mean, you get there, you do the roadworthy. Uh, when there's a queue and you get there, oh, Paul, I don't want you. Oh, come, come, come. They take you through. Da, 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 da. When you finish and they are seeing you off, if you don't mind, you can give something. If you don't mind. If you don't give, they don't tell you anything. If you don't give, they don't worry you. They, they, they're not harassing you to give them money. But they've seen you and you've come through and they've taken you through the process. It, it is expected by culture that you ought to know that the two gentlemen or the lady and the gentleman who facilitated the process for you uh, so that something that can take 15 minutes, it took seven minutes. It, it stands to reason. Or you get there at five minutes to five. They could decide that they are closing because they need five minutes to put themselves together and close. They can decide that. But they say, oh, madam, somebody has just come. Oh, who? Oh, some guy has just come. Boss, who better than? Oh, Pacho, road where? Then I feel that Uba. That kind of thing. And then you say, oh, Pacho, I mean, if you come and say, eh, it's not me too quiet. And then say, eh, that kind of narrative. And then he says, okay, who the better am I? And then they do it, and then you finish. You, you cannot just walk away, you know. So that one, I don't think it is bribery in terms of the negativity of corrupting a public official. I'm not sure that is it. It's a cultural thing that the people who did the research must identify and be able to factor it into their analysis. Passport agency and officials, 29%. We just saw uh, our foreign minister yesterday routing the passport people and telling them that uh, they should get off their back <laughs> virtually, but they should walk out of the office. They shouldn't come there <laughs> anymore. So that's what we find. Prosecutors, judges, and magistrates, that's also problematic because by the time you come into contact with a prosecutor, you come in contact with a judge, or you come in contact with a magistrate, by and large, you have questions to answer. Now, if people who have questions to answer are paying, 22% of the citizenry are paying magistrates and judges, that's also very worrying. It's a worrying phenomenon that we need to look at, isn't it? <laughs> okay. National Intelligence Bureau is particularly disturbing. Very, very worrying. The NIB, the National Intelligence Bureau, that is doing investigations, the very sophisticated investigations against crime is conducted by the National Investigations Bureau. We don't want to see that they are demanding bribes from 21% of the citizenry. That is very, very worrying, isn't it? It's, it's problematic. I believe so. Road safety and uh, road safety authority, that one, it falls in the police category, the immigration category, that kind of thing. Yeah, all right. Prison officials. <laughs> that one too, I think, so if somebody is in prison, his people go and visit him, and he tells them that, oh, this prison officer is very, very kind to me, you know. Every time he brings us out of the farm and he takes us out of the car, he gives us the food, he's very kind to me. And the people decide that, oh, prison officer Efrem was saying, and he says, oh, Efrem, uh, Baba, he says, okay, Baba, now Efrem, Kwame Mensa, Kwame Mensa, and he says, okay, Baba, now Efrem, Kwame Mensa, and he says, okay, Baba, something like that. It's allowed. I think it's allowed. It's not, it's not corruption. It is just showing appreciation to some, somebody's work. People will say that it is his normal work. Why are you showing appreciation? I get that. But it is also culturally right to give something to the person if they have said that she's doing a good job. Okay. All right. So that's prison. MMDA's officials. And then there's GRA tax or revenue officers, 12%. That one too is problematic, isn't it? Uh, members of the Ghana Armed Forces, 10%. I put that around the police area. Welfare officials, 10%. Embassy consulate officers, 10%. That's also very interesting. Public utility officials, 9.5. Teachers, lecturers, or professors, 9.5. I'm not sure what form these teachers bribe, that what they are calling bribe takes, but I sincerely believe that that may not be bribe. If a person is giving a teacher money, I'm not sure, unless the students who are looking for admission, students who are looking to change their results, if that is so, then I, maybe the research should have stated it. But a professor, I'm not so sure that professors are taking money to change people's results. I, I don't know, but... This needs a bit more explanation. Doctors, nurses, and midwives, I think that is, is totally, I mean, it's most likely incorrect. People go to, look at how our hospitals are choked. Some nurses get out of their way to do something. You give them money. I mean, a nurse is closing. He's walking out. He says, oh, nurse, and am going for dressing. Hey, me, they're my pong. He says, okay, oh, they're my That's the dressing. And then you say 30 CDs, and they come and put it as corruption. I'm not sure about that. I'm not sure about that. Doctors, nurses, and midwives. Ah, midwives corrupt. What are they going to do? The woman is about to give birth. They have to be, they, they always do it. They almost always do it. They will not say, give me money before I take the child out of the lady. No. But when they finished, most likely family members, the lady herself, her husband, 
the chair, or other children, they are most likely going to thank the midwife. Thank the midwife doesn't mean you say thank you. Yes, you say thank you and you say God bless you, but you add 20 cities. And I'm not sure that's corruption. If that's what is being captured as corruption, I think we should have another look at it. Because those who do the research must be sensitive to the culture of the people that they are researching, you see. Okay, so I guess that we are almost done. Executive branch of government, 5.6. What does that mean? Does it mean the vice president, the president, the chief of staff, or it means that the executive branch, including Ministry of Local Government, okay, there's local government representatives here, 4.3. Social Security, 3.8. Other health workers in public hospitals, 3.3. Elected government representatives, that's members of parliament, 2.9. Ah, I'm not sure. You know, parliament doesn't have a lobbying system. So if you want parliament to do something for you, you go to the parliamentarians themselves and talk to them about it. Uh, I don't know whether they demand money or you, you need to pay money because if parliament had a lobbying system like the United States, and I have a lobby group, and I've been thinking about this. That's why I supported Professor Michael Quay's uh, private member's bill. So there's a private member's bill like the LGBTQ. It's a private member's bill. And uh, you want to move a private member's bill as an organization or as an oil company or whatever. You want to move a private member's bill, you go to the lobbying organization in parliament. They will tell you that this bill can be passed in one year. For the bill to be passed in one year, you need to produce this document, that document. But they charge you a fee as well in America. They can charge you millions of dollars to the lobbying group for the passing of the bill. What they do with that money includes their fees and other things, other people's fees. And it could be some congressmen, it could not be them. I don't know. But the lobbying group charges you. In Ghana, we don't have that. So if you want to create a private member's bill about pollution, you have to go and talk to the committee. I'm not so sure whether that talking will exclude money because you are inviting them to do something for you. <laughs> I mean, I really don't understand.